so today we'll just go for intro so whenever we talk about this hibernate so let me just put these lines and explain okay so whenever we are talking about hibernate hibernate is uh, so as i told you in the beginning so we started with uh, uh, the object oriented basics and again the term comes into the picture again it is basically high performance object relational persistence okay persistence in the sense in simple terms we are talking about the database okay so database and the query service so query service in the sense as you have done in jdbc what you have done so you have written the queries okay you have written the queries and you have done the operations and basically you went with the crude operations right so like create uh, retrieve update delete so all these operations are query service okay so it is a high performance object relational okay so object relation in the sense so relational is rdbms okay and oop so it is basically the combination of oop and uh, object relational uh, database object relational database with query service okay so it is licensed under gnu okay so this is the uh, license and it is very uh, uh, it is a resource which is free to download so you don't have to uh, spend anything on it so it is uh, a free download one so what it takes it takes uh, it takes okay so what it takes basically it takes the it takes care of the mapping from Java classes to database tables. So try to understand this point. What is this? It is a mapping from Java classes to database tables. So uh, you might be saying JDBC also we have done the same thing. Yes, we have done the same thing, but JDBC was not an uh, uh, object relational thing object relational thing so which will be provided by our hibernate so hibernate provides that okay so now you understood what is jdbc anyhow we will try to understand the shortcomings of jdbc and then we will be understanding why we require this hibernate uh, for the study okay so now first of all what is jdbc now i think you will be able to tell me what exactly is JDBC because uh, all these days you are looking at that, right? So, you, all these days you are looking at that. So, JDBC was JDBC was obviously Java database connectivity. It sets or it provides, okay, it provides set of API accessing the relational databases from the Java program. So, all these things we know, right? So, these Java APIs will enable you to execute so will enable to execute sql statements and interact with any sql uh, compliant database sql compliant database means all the sql so like oracle you have like you have sql server so you have mysql you have db2 all of them so connecting the connecting the jdbc but whenever we are talking about jdbc there are some shortfalls okay so these are the shortfalls and we will try to understand uh, the advantages first advantage is clean and simple sql processing so we understood it right so it is a clean and so it is a clean and uh, uh, simple sql processing so good performance with large data fine very good for smaller applications so rather than uh, going for the bigger applications so when we work with jdbc on small applications it would be good okay so here when you are talking about cons complex if it is used in large projects okay so suppose if you are uh, looking at a bigger project okay a bigger project so then jdbc might fail okay so jdbc might fail so large programming overhead means so you need to remember so many uh, methods you need to remember so many uh, techniques to understand or to do JDBC programming and no encapsulation. So, no encapsulation means no security. Okay, so no security. So, hard to implement MVC. MVC means 
model view controller so model view controller so you are not able to not able to get the mvc architecture going so you are not able to get the mvc architecture going okay so that's what is the uh, advantage with the, okay so uh, disadvantage disadvantage with this particular logic okay so that's how you are looking at okay so that's how you are looking at the uh, uh, shortfalls of the jdbc shortfalls of the jdbc you are looking at the shortfalls of jdbc wherein you are uh, wherein you are looking at looking at complex if it is used on large objects so a bigger programming so bigger programming okay encapsulation is not available and you also uh, uh, feel that it is very difficult to apply the mvc model view controller architecture okay so that's what the points are okay so then instead of going into jdbc we can go for orm orm technique in the sense object relational mapping so this is what i was saying in the beginning also right what was i telling you in the beginning here i was saying you object relational mapping okay so who is responsible for that orm okay so who is responsible and what are the things that we will look into this orm so why orm so why this mapping has to be taken place why this mapping has to be taken place between why this mapping has to be taken place between uh, uh, object and so between object and so between object and this particular uh, database so why there should be a thing so when we work with object oriented system so there is always a mismatch between object model and the relational database okay so there will be there will be always mismatch okay so there will be always mismatch between object model object model in the sense what object model in the sense object model in the sense the uh, class you develop okay so class you develop so there is always a so there is always a mismatch okay so basically whenever we are talking about uh, relational databases what relational databases will represent relational database will represent the table i mean database tables in a tabular format in a tabular format and whenever you talk about uh, java there is there is a uh, uh, kind of graph okay there is a kind of graph okay i'll tell you why and what okay so simply you put these points so why there is a mismatch why there is a mismatch because i'll tell you so why uh, why we are talking about the mismatch i'll tell you so we are talking about the mismatch because we are talking about the mismatch because so now if you see classes and if you see rdbms okay so now if you see classes so for example student so student contains student number student name student marks okay student contains um student contains uh, 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 okay so it he may also contain uh, something like uh, uh, subjects okay so he may also contain something like uh, uh, what you say address okay all this so this is what so this is a object mapping but when you look at rdbms so you will have the tables so you'll have the tables okay so student number student name student marks student address student subject okay so in this way you are going to have the table the relationship between this and this cannot be maintained so cannot be maintained using a jdbc using a jdbc all the thing all the way that we do is we try to take the classes build the uh, programs which will write a queries to the database so that is what we were doing but uh, never the time we were trying to map okay so who, who what will the orm do now orm will do that mapping orm will do that mapping okay so that is why we say object model this is object model and relational database so there is a quite a mismatch so there is quite a mismatch between 
those two things so there is a quite a mismatch between those two things so that is why we need to go for so we need to go for so what we need to go for here so we need to go for the okay so what what we need to go for here so we need to go for orm so what is orm guarantee orm guarantee so orm guarantee what so orm will guarantee the object relational mapping okay so in that way you are going to deal with the things okay right okay so now okay so let me and um, let me make you understand okay so let me make you understand the things by looking at the further things okay so now this is your so what is this so this is your so this is your um, uh, class okay so this is your java class so this is your java class so java class with the with an employee so what is the employee container so employee will contain id first name last name so id first name last name okay for uh, salary so salary so first name last name salary so what is this this is going to be a class okay so you might know this class so this is also known as the pojo class if you remember this is also known as the pojo class so pojo class okay so pojo class so pojo class in the sense what so pojo class in the sense a plain old java object okay. now this is our so this is our employee class okay and this is our employee uh, constructor which will initialize the values and this is the getter getter and setter methods so this is the getter and setter methods okay. so setter and getter methods and so and this is now class and we also need to understand so we also need to understand so we also need to understand what the above objects to be stored and retrieved in the table to be stored and retrieved in the stored and retrieved over this table okay over this table means uh, okay let me put uh, okay so let me put this in the table okay so that okay so so this is going to be so table okay so this is going to be table and this is going to be the class okay now what is hibernate hibernate is the one which is going to link these two okay so which is going to link these two okay so that's what our plan is okay so what is this employee class employee class should be able to so should be able to link this i mean have the data uh, should be linked to this particular table so this is a class it's java class with proper constructors proper constructors and set to get methods set to get methods set to get methods okay set to get methods or you can say setter getter methods okay and this is going to be so this is going to be a table so this is going to be a table so table or i can say dbms table so dbms table so dbms table or you can say rdbms table for that matter okay so rdbms table so this is okay now what i told you this is what i was saying right so students i take students so here it is employee so all this data right all this data so must be matched with this table so then what is the problem the first problem is 
the first and the foremost problem with this is okay so first problem is so what is the first problem we need to modify the design of our database okay after having developed a few pages of our application after designing some pages we need to modify the design of your database means so there might be uh, very much increase in the values or there might be necessity of extra uh, data because there will be so many classes okay so there will be i mean so much of uh, so many of the objects that will come into the picture okay so that will come into the picture okay so that is where so that is where we need to have so that is where we need to have the we need to have the, the okay so that is where we need to have uh, the hibernate okay so and some more problems also need to be discussed on this what are those problems so the problems are okay so loading and storing objects okay expose us to the following problems okay so what are those problems i will try to uh, put it over here okay so these, these will all lead to the need for or so this will all lead to the need for or so what is that first one granularity so granularity means when you will have an object model okay so granularity means sometimes you will have an object model so this object model which has okay so object model which has or this object model more classes then the number of tables so we it may have so there may be 50 classes and you have only 35 tables to accommodate so then there would be a problem so then there would be a problem okay so then coming to inheritance in rdbms rdbms is not object oriented right so in rdbms there won't be any um, uh, inheritance or anything but your class whatever you have is to be object oriented okay so an rdbms defines exactly one notion of sameness the primary key java defines both identity as well as equality so identity so here identity uh, in database is only one and but in op there are many versions okay so that is a problem so associations means object oriented programming language represent association uh, whereas rdbm represents association as a foreign key as a foreign key means what is the difference here we'll have the references right so here we'll have the references in op languages we have the references but in uh, so but in so but in uh, op languages you have the references so but in so in what you have so in the so in the so references but you have uh, but you don't have the references exactly like a foreign key okay so you have total different uh, kind of references okay so this uh, navigation means access object in java are fundamentally different so totally what are the problems so granularity inheritance identity association and navigation so these are the five problems that we need to tackle okay tackle and which uh, the tackling is done by object relational mapping okay object relational mapping so what exactly is object relational mapping we need to understand so first of all you can go for okay so the above problems all of them will be dealt by so solution for all the above problems is this. so will be dealt by this so what is orm so orm stands for object relational mapping object relational mapping okay so orm stands for object relational mapping okay so it is a technique for converting data between relational databases and object oriented programming languages okay so it is so what is orm here so orm is a programming technique for converting data between relational databases and 
So what is ORM now? It is a technique for converting the data between relational databases and OOP. Okay, so relational databases and OOP. So that is what is ORM. Okay. Now let us understand what are the advantages of ORM over ORM over JDBC. Okay. So the advantages of ORM over JDBC are so you can just read those points what are those points here so the points are let let the business code access the objects rather than the tables okay so we are not completely dependent on the tables we are not completely dependent on the tables so what we are trying to do so we are trying to let the business code access the objects let the business code access the objects rather than so rather than okay so let the business code access the objects rather than the database tables rather than the database table let the business code access the tables okay so let the business code access the tables rather than the database tables okay so sql Hide details of SQL queries from object oriented logic. Okay, so we can hide them. Okay, we can hide the details. So we can hide the details of SQL queries from which logic from the from the object oriented logic. Okay, so it is based. So it is based completely on. So it is based completely on what? So completely under the hood under the hood in the sense so at the background it is based on jdbc only it is based on the jdbc only okay so no need to deal with the database implementation so no need to deal with the database implementation so entities the entities are based on the business concepts rather than the database structures the entities are based on the entities are based on the business concepts not on the database structure okay so business concepts it is not so transaction management or automatic key gen so all the advantages of ORM so these are all the advantages of ORM and you can also go for the four very interesting or very useful solutions on the OR. So what are the useful solutions you can observe? You can observe that. So what are the things here? An ORM is an API. Okay, so we perform the crude operations, right? So we perform the crude operations. So those crude operations, so those crude operations we performed are going to be, are going to be create alter I mean create uh, uh, retrieve delete and update so what you are having here so we are having an API to perform all the operations okay so and a language or API to specify uh, queries that refer to classes and the properties of classes means it is a language so hibernate is an API again or a language oh, sorry not I hibernate ORM basically okay so and it is a technique to interact with transactional objects okay like lazy as okay, we will we'll see everything under the programming so that time you will get to know what exactly they are okay so what are the several not only not only this uh, hibernate we also have so many things uh, uh, you can see so you can see uh, enterprise java beans okay so EJB we call it. So now we are not using this EJB. So Java data objects, Castor, Toplink, Spring DAO. So these two are the famous things that are being used now. So which we will be looking forward to also. So these are the several ORM frameworks that we are going to look out for. Okay. So so there are so many. So but we are, we have selected to go for the hibernate. Okay. So simply speaking, the Hibernate is an ORM framework. So Hibernate is an ORM framework. Okay. So what exactly is Hibernate? Okay. So 
so what we are trying to do here so hibernate is an okay so is an ORM solution is an ORM solution when we are saying ORM solution okay so it is an ORM solution for Java okay it is an ORM solution for Java so what it creates it's an open source persistent framework created by that particular person Gavin King okay so it, it is not relevant to us but still we need to understand who did that okay and then it is a powerful high performance object relational persistent and query service for any java application for any java application so you take up any java application so this will be one of the prominent ones okay so this will be one of the prominent ones okay so this will be one of the prominent ones okay and it is going to be uh, going to be uh, mapping java classes to the database tables from java data types to sql data types and it gives you 90 percent 95 percent of the common data persistent related programming tasks so at the end of the day if you see here java objects are mapped to rdbms via hibernate okay so via hibernate okay so what what they are they are being mapped from they are being mapped from java objects to rdbms but in the middle so in the middle you are looking at so in, you are looking at what so you are looking at the hibernate so this is what the hibernate is going to do okay so this is what the hibernate is going to do so we have understood uh, previously how we can write a program uh, and connect to the database using jdbc right but now the things entirely will change so we will be taking orm structures okay so we'll be taking orm structures okay so simply you can go for the hibernate advantages so hibernate advantages so you can just read them out so what are the advantages of hibernate so hibernate is the one which will take care of so which will take care of mapping java classes to databases using using what xml files using xml files and there is no need to write any line of code for that okay so and then it will provide you apis for storing and retrieving the java objects directly to and from the database directly to and from the database okay if there is a change in the database or in any table so don't think that uh, we will avoid the uh, table creation and everything but no so we will try to do that but what is the solution orm is a solution that's it okay they need to change the xml file properties only so no need to change the whole program so, okay so we can just change the properties so that is what happens okay so that is what happens basically so here so this is going to be the concept okay so abstracts away the unfamiliar sql types and provides a way to work around familiar java objects so familiar java objects hibernate does not require a server okay so it does not require a server so it will manipulate complex association object means it will try to uh, uh, make the association better using the objects of your database so what it minimizes it minimizes the database access with smart fetching strategies okay so it will work smarter than harder i can say that so it will provide sample i mean simple querying on the data so you can just read them out once again so you will understand but who will support hibernate so almost every database in the world will support the hibernate so so and what are the technologies that will support this so you can 
look at the supported databases and you can look at the supported uh, technologies okay so supported technology supported databases so here you can see database engine db2 nt mysql so here we will be trying on mysql oracle so mysql sybase so everything almost everything will support these technologies okay support these technologies and then and then if we are understanding so if you are trying to understand the architecture how we look at the architecture of the hibernate okay so hibernate architecture if you observe so hiber once again so hibernate architecture i think i copied it double times okay so hibernate architecture if you observe so here you can see there is a java application and we'll have a persistent object and connecting to the hibernate means so you need to uh, override the properties and you need to override the mapping okay you need to override the mapping so which helps the user to cooperate without having to know the underlying api so hibernate so hibernate makes use of hibernate makes use of the database and configuration data to provide persistent services and persistent objects to the application so following is a very high level view of the hibernate application architecture means what simply you are trying to say here we are trying to go for a java application upon a persistent object upon a persistent object and what we are going for we are going for the hibernate on its properties and xml mapping and we are dealing with so we are dealing with uh, dealing with the so what we are dealing with now so we are dealing with the properties and mapping and finally it is getting connected to the database okay so okay so here so here we are going to take that into things okay so this is the way that we are going for the architecture okay and then we will try and deal with okay so this is copied double time so oh not double time sorry so these are the cores sorry so these are the cores that are available under this so not double time so course under course under in the sense so what will be there in the middle okay so what will be there in the middle and we will try and understand those things okay, so we'll understand those things so here you can see so we will be coding everything we'll be coding everything don't worry about that so hibernate so these are the things that are there on the outstretch but when you go into the detailed view you'll have to make configurations transaction query so session factory session criteria so you have to work with jta jdbc jndi all will be the integral part okay so very existing java apis like uh, jdbc jta okay jndi okay so uh, it, it will be it will be everything it will be a, a culture of everything so that we will be going for so now we will try to understand the configuration object configure object is the first object that you have to create okay so you have to create so here if you observe so we are to go for the configuration object okay configuration object so what we need to do in the configuration object so if you just go through it in the configuration object so what we need to do we need to okay so it is executed only once okay so only once throughout the application so it is usually so it is going to be so it is going to be what so it is going to be usually created only once during the application initialization it represents what it represents the configuration of properties file required by the hibernate so it represents the configuration or it requires it represents the 
configuration or properties file. So it requires it represents what? Configuration. It represents a configuration or a properties file. Okay. So in that properties file, what we will be uh, going for? So we will be going for the database connection. Okay. So database connection. So these files, what are the files? The files are hibernate properties. I mean hibernate dot properties and hibernate dot CFG dot XML. CFG dot XML. So these files are hibernate dot properties and hibernate dot CFG dot XML. So and then and then uh, we also have we also have the other component where we try to create the connection between java class and the database tables okay so that is what the point and next object we need to work with is session factory object so what is session factory object okay so basically it is for the configuration so it is for the configuration of what it is used for so it is used for the configuration of okay application with the configuration file okay so application with the configuration file and it allows uh, the session object to be initiated okay so it is a thread safe object used by all the threads okay so this is like uh, uh, configuring configuring okay configuring the uh, configuration basically or you can say making the configuration work okay session factory as per as per okay session session factory object so session factory object for okay so session factory object so it is going to be creating so you will need one so you will need so so let me take off this so session factory object per database using separate configuration file so if you are multiple databases then you will have to okay so uses okay so one per uh, uses a separate configuration file if you are using multiple databases then you would like to go for you would like to go for multiple session factory objects so once you have all these uh, uh, things done so we can simply write the code okay and then we have the session object so what the session object is going to do so we will see the application with that we will try to understand session is to get the physical connection between with the database with the database so physical connection with the database the session object is lightweight and designed to be initiated each time is needed with the database okay so persistent objects are saved and retrieved through a session of so and then okay so session object should not be kept for a long time okay because they are not safe okay so they are not safe so we can uh, close the session objects whenever the work is done okay and then we need to go for the transaction object so transaction means the operation object okay so what exactly uh, the operation we are doing so that is said to be the transaction object the so transaction object represent a unit of work with the database transactions in the hibernate are handled are handled by underlying transaction manager okay so there is an optional object okay so this is an optional object and hibernate application may choose not to use this and so basically uh, uh, some kind of uh, understanding of each and every object so when we are trying to develop the application then we will understand each and everything so now try and understand what exactly are they and then later on while developing the application so we can go for each and everything once again okay so criteria object okay criteria object and then uh, the query object and the criteria object so query 
objects use SQL or Hibernate query language string, retrieve the database and create the objects. So what a query instance uh, is used to, it is used to bind the query. So I, I want you to just go through all these things once because so once we understand the theory part of it, so then it will be easy for us to understand uh, the programming. Okay. So I just want to uh, you to go through. So in our next class, I will be giving you how we can download and how we can uh, have it. Okay. So all that we will be uh, trying to deal with in our next session. So today I want you to just go through these things. Okay. So once you have a clear idea on everything, so then it will be easy for us. Okay.